In previous videos, I've talked about the many things that have to happen within an on-chip network, you know, things like a routing algorithm, uh, flow control, deadlock avoidance, virtual channel allocation, and so on. So all of this makes a router fairly complex and a non-trivial part of the entire processor chip. And so I'm going to spend some time describing the microarchitecture within each individual router. And then I'll end with a discussion of uh, different kinds of topologies and their inherent trade-offs. So firstly, you know, as I said, there are many things that a router has to do. Okay, so you know, when when something comes in, it gets placed in some input buffers. There are multiple input buffers corresponding to each virtual channel. Then you know, you have to do various computations to figure out where this packet is headed. Once you once you've done that, you go through a bunch of arbiters, which will then allocate virtual channels or will allocate the physical channel to this packet. Once you've picked a packet for traversal, you know that packet has to go through a circuit called a crossbar and I'll explain that a little bit more but this essentially allows you to go from any input port to any output port and then once you come out of the crossbar you go on these output drivers which send you on the output link and then you hop over to the next router right so there's a lot happening within each of these routers and that pipeline is complex enough that I'm, I'm going to explain that in the next few slides but you know, keep in mind that this can contribute quite significantly to overall processor power consumption and latency. So you know, some studies have shown that you know these on-chip uh, networks can contribute anywhere between 10 to 35 percent of total chip power. And you know, this of course depends on how the routers are designed and what they are connecting. And likewise, you know, every hop in the network can take a handful of cycles, which means that you know, going from one end of the chip to the other end, either to reach a remote cache bank or to reach some remote memory controller can take you know tens of cycles and so you know these on-chip network delays can play a huge role in overall performance so usually you know there is no silver bullet when you're trying to optimize a router so some studies have shown that if you look at the network power you know there that that power is roughly equally distributed across three major components the links themselves so the output drivers and the links itself account for about 30 percent of total on-chip network power then these buffers over here account for another 30%, and this crossbar circuit over here accounts for another 30%, and the remaining 10% are you know miscellaneous circuits within your router. Okay, so as I said, you know th these these routers are complex enough that they have a pipeline of their own. Okay, so usually, uh, you know most people assume that the router can be implemented as you know four separate functional or logical stages. The first one is called routing computation. Okay, so you know here's my router. Something comes in, it gets placed, you know, in these uh, in these input buffers. Okay, and once once placed over there, if you see a head flit, so if there's a head flit sitting over here, you need to analyze the header in the head flit to figure out where this packet needs to be sent. Okay, so there is a stage called routing computation, which looks at the header information within a head flit, and it tries to decide where this packet should be sent. Right, so this is where your routing algorithm would be encoded. So if you're using deterministic routing. And if you're coming in on this input port and you want to go straight on, this is where you decide that this packet needs to be sent on my east port. If you're doing adaptive routing, then again, this is where you have all the logic about, you know, where is congestion? How do I avoid that congestion? What is the shortest way to get to my destination? And so on. So it is a routing computation stage that is going to decide if you're going to, you know, north, south, east, or west. Having done that, you then go to the VA stage, which is now going to allocate a virtual channel on your desired output channel. So if you've picked the East port, if the East port has, you know, if the next router has, say, two different virtual channels, then this is where you decide, you know, who gets that virtual channel, right? So if, if two other packets are already in transit, then this packet has to wait, okay? So as I said, this is a pipeline. So the head flit first does routing computation, then it does virtual channel allocation, and if this fails, it has to do VA allocation again in the next cycle, right? So it keeps doing this, until one of those virtual channels is free and when it is free there could be multiple different packets all requesting that same virtual channel right so again you might fail at first but eventually you will be assigned a virtual channel right so you keep repeating the step until you get your virtual channel okay so now let's say that you've been assigned you know virtual channel 0 on your east port the next step next step is to actually get access to the physical link and this is called the switch allocation stage Okay, so you know, as I said before, there is a crossbar which has you know five inputs, and this is five inputs because there's north, south, east, west, 
and this current node itself, right? So each router is connected to one element. So you could either be injecting a packet into the network or ejecting a packet out of the network. So that's one of the ports and the other four are your north, south, east, west neighbors. So there are five input ports and there are five output ports in this grid network and the crossbar allows you to go from any one of these input ports to any one of these output ports. Okay, so this is, so in, in this SA stage is where you allocate the physical link to a given packet. Okay, so there, as I said, there could be multiple uh, different packets competing to go out on this physical link in a cycle. If there are two virtual channels, you could have up to two packets that are trying to go out. So this is, so in this SA stage is where I decide, you know, who gets that physical link in the next cycle. If this this current header that I'm looking at in this example is given the physical link, then you know it succeeds in this SA stage. And so then in the next stage, the switch traversal, that's when the value actually gets read out of its buffer, goes in over here, and then comes out on the east link over here, and then gets placed on the output port. Okay, so the switch traversal is essentially the part where you know you've been assigned all the resources that you need. So this is where you you read yourself out of the input buffer, go through the crossbar to the east output link, and then you make your hop across the link, right? So after the switch traversal stage, there could be um, a couple more stages of you know link traversal, right? So if this link itself takes about you know two cycles to cross, you could have two more link traversal stages, and then you reach the other end, and then you get written into their input buffers and then you go through the same pipeline again in that next router okay so as i said there are you know four different stages you have to first figure out where you're going once you've figured out where you're going you need to allocate a virtual channel on that link once you've done that you then need to allocate the physical link once you've been given all these resources that's when you actually you know read yourself out of the input buffer go through the crossbar place yourself on the output link this could take a few cycles to actually you know get across to the other side and then you repeat this process again, right? So this is a four-stage pipeline. As I said earlier, the head flit goes through all of these four stages because for the head flit, you have to analyze the header to figure out, you know, where exactly should this this packet be sent. Then you need to pick a virtual channel on that on that link, and then you have to allocate, um, and and then you have to allocate the physical link itself, and then do the traversal. If you look at the body flits they don't have to go through the first two stages, right? Because we, we know that the body flits are just going to follow the head flit. So if the head flit has been, has been selected to go to the east port, everybody else is just going to inherit that information. So there's no routing computation for the body flits and the tail flit. And likewise, they don't need to allocate a virtual channel for themselves. If virtual channel 1 has been allocated to the head flit, everybody else inherits that same virtual channel and they have to follow right behind the head flit. So there's no RC and VA stage for these body flits, right? So they do nothing in these two stages. Unfortunately, you know, you can't, this is an in-order pipeline. All of the flits have to follow one after another. So even though the body flits, you know, have to go through a two-stage pipeline, it's not as if they can overtake the head flit and, and, and get ahead, right? So they do nothing in the first two stages. And then in order, they, go, they all go through the switch allocation and the switch traversal stages. Okay, and so this is this is how the pipeline is designed. As I showed you earlier, you can have stalls in this pipeline, right? So if the virtual channel is not free, you could be stuck doing VA for a whole bunch of cycles. In this example, I'm showing you that maybe there was more competition for the physical link itself, and so you had to wait for a cycle to let some other packet go through. So there was a stall in the SA stage, and you know once the head flit or any flit gets stalled, every flit behind it also gets stalled, right? So everybody has to do their SA, SA stage one cycle later.